And finally, new rule, since this is our last show before the holidays, let's remember to never lose sight of the true meaning of the season. It's not about presents and fruitcake and putting up extra lights to show that you love Jesus more than your neighbor. It's about a teenage virgin getting knocked up by God. <laughs> As depicted here in Botticelli's masterpiece, Mary, age 12, gets a visit from Judge Roy Moore. <laughs> and since this will be President Trump's first Christmas in the White House, I thought it would be appropriate to take a page out of Christmas favorites like A Christmas Carol and It's a Wonderful Life, where a character is shown an alternative reality to their life. Like when an angel named Clarence shows George Bailey what the world would be like if he'd never been born. Huh, what if Donald Trump <laughs> had never been born? <laughs> wow, was that as good for you as it was for me? <laughs> Now, in A Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge is visited by the ghost of Christmas past, and since Donald Trump is truly the Ebenezer Scrooge of our time, angry, rich, and hard to look at, <laughs> maybe tonight I could play the part of the ghost and show Trump an alternative reality of what his life could have been if he weren't such a shithead. <laughs> so, Donald, let me take you back, back, all the way back, all right, not that far. <laughs> but far enough back to remind you that even though you're a big man now, flying in the big plane and living in the big house and eating the Big Mac, <laughs> are you truly happy? What happened to that little boy from Queens? Here you are as a toddler, the last time you had a good hair day. <laughs> Your father was a strict authoritarian. Is that where it all started to go wrong? Because, you know, you weren't always the wrestling villain you are today. You used to say things like... I'm not looking to make tremendous amounts of money. I'm looking to enjoy my life. What? <laughs> Donald Trump saying there's more to life than money? What happened to this Donald Trump? Did you hide him with your Russia connections? <laughs> Did you divorce him when he hit menopause? <laughs> You even used to show humility. No matter how bright a person may be, there is always that element of luck. Did you hear that, Don? <laughs> luck! Not on the greatest, on the smartest, only I can fix it. I want that Trump back. He spoke softly and wasn't a big dick. <laughs> he... even had vulnerability. You weren't afraid to show affection to Don Jr. and to, to Eric and to Ivanka, especially to Ivanka. <laughs> you even dressed in a more vulnerable fashion, like the world's whitest pimp. <laughs> and when Rona Barrett asked you what was more important, work or love, you said... I would probably choose love. Choose love? Not pussy grabbing? <laughs> Careful, Don, it's a slippery slope to compassion. Because the old Trump even used to worry about the poor. New York City has been becoming a city of the very rich, actually. And the poor, unfortunately, and the middle class are having a hard time. Hear that? You acknowledge the existence of poor people. I know, it's so strange hearing those words now come out of your mouth. It's like when the little girl in The Exorcist says, your mother sucks cocks in hell. <laughs> Last year, when David Duke endorsed you, you claimed you didn't know him, but you sure knew who he was two decades ago. Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. But now it's exactly the people you want in your party. Do you see, Don? Do you see what spending the last 20 years watching Fox News has done to your brain? Is it too late to bring back the old Trump? How the fuck should I know? I'm a ghost, not Nostradamus. <laughs> 
But I do know you better be good, Donald Trump, because there's a jolly man who lives up north who hangs out with reindeer and watches everything. And his name is Vladimir Putin. Yeah. <laughs>